Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about narcissism. You might think that there is only one type of narcissist out there, but it's actually two different types. And they're actually connected to two different or three different sides of the personality trait. I'll try to be um, as simple as possible so that you understand. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the bell button and or icon to get notified when I post more videos. If you like it, put a comment down below, thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Write a question if you have it and I'll try and answer it in the comments below. But let's get going. Today we're going to talk about a subject that I have been interested in for quite some time now. And finally did the research and read up all, all these science reports that I could find. There's many, many more. And in recent years, there's been a lot more science uh, coming out uh, regarding actually uh, narcissism. Narcissism is a personality trait that many people get subjected to from others and that causes them harm. And so that's why, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a video about it, to uh, give you some hints of how to spot a nar narcissist and which different types there are actually, uh, because there are more than one type and the other one you probably don't see as easy as the simplest one that we can see on the television every single day. Uh, the commonality for narcissistic tendencies are exaggerated sense of self-importance, condescending attitude, need for excessive admiration, diminished empathy and exploitativeness, which means that you exploit other people. Uh, the diminished empathy thing you can actually find out through the big five tests if you already done it and I've spoken about that in the previous mentioned videos on personality traits. But let's get down to the uh, other types of narcissists that are out there and are recognized by the psychology uh, community. Uh, there are two types of narcissists. It's grandiose narcissism and vulnerable narcissism. Well, I'll start off with the grandiose one. Grandiose narcissism is an agentic extroversion trait, which means basically, as I said in the extroverted uh, personality trait video, uh, it's about the dopamine circuit, the positive circuit in your brain. It gives you a kick when you get in your element being around people uh, if you're high in extroversion for example and when it comes to uh, ex the different types of extroversion you have one that is internalizing which means that when you're within other with other people you get a positive dopamine kick out of it but you internalize it which means you feel good about it, but you don't show it, which is good. The other one is called agentic extroversion, and that is what's connected to the grandiose trait. So what is that? Well, they have high self-esteem. You can see it in their boldness. They are usually exhibitionists. They seek admiration and they like to dominate. You probably can spot those on the telly. The cold politicians. I would, uh, and this is purely subjectively speaking, um, I would guess that if you find a politician that is not a grandiose narcissist, that probability is much lower than simply saying that in general politicians are grandiose narcissists. But it seems and looks like they're actually less harmful to the mental health to be a grandiose narcissist. And when you look at the, um, the spectrum of extroversion, 
you should look between 50 and 75 that's where you have the probability of having a grandiose narcissist but not being harmful to themselves they're also emotionally intelligent grandiose narcissists compared to the other type one good thing to know about the grandiose narcissist is that they do not suppress positive or negative emotions they show them openly and they do have a tendency to overestimate what their capabilities and that is also called the Dunning-Kruger effect Dunning-Kruger were two scientists that measured how people when they know little about a subject they speak about it in a manner that they sound like an expert or a professor so for example when you read a job application that is very much filled with a lot of attributes and how good they are well that is a good example of the Dunning-Kruger effect because I read a, a few thousand of those and checked whether or not they were good enough or not they usually are not very good in that profession when they exaggerate on the other side of the Dunning-Kruger effect is the ones that are professional that are experts and that are professors within a particular subject and know everything about it or very much they always come to the conclusion that they know so much information about the subject that they also understand that the subject is so complex that they actually know very little about it and therefore they don't write it write or speak about it as they are experts another factor with being very good at one topic being an expert is that you see other people as having the same amount of knowledge as you do which is not very good when you talk, start to communicate with other people within that subject that you're an expert in. You need to, uh, to pick them up from where they stand in the knowledge base on that subject so that they feel that they are within that subject and can understand it, even though you can understand it much better than them. So that's a problem with being uh, an expert. That's the uh, grandiose narcissist personality and then we have the other one the one that you don't see very often I'll tell you why it's the vulnerable narcissist vulnerable narcissist has been connected to uh, introversion the lower end of extroversion which means that they don't get a dopamine kick out of being with people like a grandiose narcissist they are basically withdrawn and mostly vulnerable narcissists are as the 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 word itself speaks vulnerable you will find that within the neurotic personality subgroups so it's very much neurotic people that are high in eroticism that can be vulnerable narcissists and the the subgroups of that is depression they're defensive they have high anxiety they have high avoidance, which can be connected to the uh, introverted side of them. They are hi hypersensitive. And that is also one of the measures, measurements on how to measure if you are a narcissist or not when it comes to vulnerable narcissism. There are two tests out there that shrinks do on people to find out if they really are narcissists or not. And you can do it on yourself one of those tests is called hypersensitive narcissism scale hsns test the other one is called narcissistic personality inventory scale and there's a third one as well that you can use you can probably find these online for free to to take and you, they'll plot you and see where within the spectrum you fall so you can see if you have a tendency to be hypersensitive if you see the questions and see how you can answer uh, 
you can really easy pick those people in a workplace, for example, or in your partner if they're hypersensitive and thus have a problem maybe with being in a vulnerable narcissist. But what distinguishes the vulnerable narcissist? Well, they are like the grandiose narcissists, which are emotional intelligent. Vulnerable narcissists are not emotionally intelligent. They also have a greater negative effect when it comes to shame. So feeling shame is something that they is connected to the vulnerable narcissistic personality trait and they will go into hiding so to speak that's also why you see a connection to introversion and avoidance they hide when they do the certain things which i'm coming to in a few minutes um, they are very hypersensitive I want to mention that within interpersonal relationships, that's important to understand. Uh, it, that is a good indicator of them being a vulnerable narcissist. Um, why is it important to understand the vulnerable narcissist and especially that one? Because they have a tendency to make unethical decisions and they are more likely to enact in unethical more likely to enact in unethical behavior and as I mentioned before in the video about neuroticism one side effect of being neurotic high neuroticism is that you choose the bad option out of two should I go and work out to feel better to improve my body so that my body gets stronger or should I go out with my friends and party and drink alcohol and have fun they choose the latter one going out drinking alcohol and partying uh, and that's a bad thing about uh, being high in eroticism should I eat for example this uh, well-balanced meal with peas rice and cooked chicken or should I eat candy and pizza and chips they go for the candy pizza and chips for example if they're not uh, high in conscientiousness and do go to the gym and see that as a buffer towards feeling better and, and, and lowering the neuroticism trait. Narcissists have a materialistic tendency when it comes to public consumption. They like to buy things to show off that they what they have, which means a nice car, for example, can show as nice clothes, buy a nice house, jewelry, uh, makeup, things like that. If you transform your body, that's a form of showing off your yourself and getting uh, your self-esteem increased and getting attention. That's also a narcissistic trait. It's also connected to Facebook addiction and that in turn is connection to the neuroticism trait anxiety. Um, both vulnerable and grandiose narcissism leads to Facebook addiction, or that's a great part of it. So that's also a good indication of narcissistic traits. But here's the thing, they've looked at the connection between extrover extroversion, which is grandiose narcissism, and vulnerable narcissism, and see, if, is there any connection? Are they, in fact, one in the same narcissistic personality disorder, or are they in fact two? Turns out they actually interconnect to each other. And that's when you go above 50 in extroversion up to 75. That's not harmful to the mental health of a person having ground deals in narcissistic personality disorder. But when they go above 75, that's interconnected into the vulnerable, uh, vulnerable narcissistic personality disorder in that they have a negative effect on their personality. It's also shown that nar narcissists, both sides, have problems or can show problems when it comes to alcohol consumption. And when it comes to grandiose problems, it's alcohol consumption and alcohol-related problems. 
But there's a difference when it comes to vulnerable nar uh, narcissistic personality disorder in that they also have a gambling problem. But vulnerable narcissistic personality disorder also is accompanied by them being problem recognizes. They see the problem and they are ready to change since they know they have a problem and they can expect the problem occurring. So they're, very, they're, they're more aware, even though they're not emotionally intelligent, and I'll get back to you why that is, they can still understand that they do have a problem and do something about it. Vulnerable narcissism is also connected to anhedonia, which is a reduced motivation or ability to experience pleasure which means sex, for example, usually gets dopamine kick and serotonin kick and ox oxytocin. Well, turns out that they actually have a psychological problem and the use of rather maladaptive emotional regulation strategies, which is suppression. They actually suppress their negative feelings and they also suppress their positive feelings, dopamine, for example, or, or other feelings, which is happiness. Uh, for example, which means that you don't see when they get, they don't get happy, they don't get sad so you can see it because they suppress it, but that's the reason why they are vulnerable narcissists, or that's interconnected rather. Well, that was about it when it comes to, um, to uh, narcissism and the two types. There's loads of information out there, scientific papers, that explains them both. But it's, it's important to understand that even though not everyone stands in public and loves that, um, that shine and buff, doesn't mean that they can't be a, a, a narcissist. I've actually been at least subjected to three narcissists that are vulnerable narcissists, and some of them actually grandiose as well. But it's good to know that there's different types out there and what to look out for. Um, if you have any questions, write them in the comments below. If you liked the video, put a thumbs down. If you didn't like it, put a thumbs down, for a thumbs up or the other way around. Um, subscribe if you want to find out more information about other topics in the future. And like I said, one up and coming one is one about what men and women are actually scientifically proven uh, attracted to in one another. All right, cheers everyone.